In recent years, there has been a huge increase in the level of awareness that people have about how important the saddle is to the ridden horse and how many ways it can disrupt its health, soundness and performance if it doesn't work well. It's something I come across all the time in my own work as a veterinary physiotherapist. And by working well, I mean that the saddle can provide the rider with enough comfort and support for the type of riding they're doing, without reducing the quality and the range of movement for the horse. So my name's Gabby, I'm a chartered physiotherapist and an ACPAT physiotherapist. I've got a Bachelor of Science in Physiotherapy and a Master's Degree in Veterinary Physiotherapy. So we decided to look at constructive versus conventional saddling. Um, this came from a personal interest of mine. Um, I had an ex-race horse who was very wasted um, and appeared quite lame. Um, we changed his saddle and he completely changed his way of going. I think it's widely recognised now that a saddle that is fitted badly causes discomfort, restriction, muscle atrophy, poor posture and consequently a whole range of symptoms that can range from behavioural problems right through to mechanical lameness. So our research question was to look at whether the constructive versus conventional saddling approach changed the stride length of the ridden horse in both walk and trot. We also looked at whether the constructive versus conventional saddling changed the front, front peak, the back peak and the total pressure under the saddle when the horse was being ridden in walk and trot. The study compares two different methods of saddling. One with saddles fitted to match the static width and shape of the horse in line with conventional saddle fitting practice to a constructive and functional system which takes into account the horse's dynamic width and posture. So basically that means that we have a look at whether the, the horse alters their stride length um, and how much pressure is distributed across the front part of the back um, the back part of the back and in total underneath the saddle um, of the ridden horse. What I was interested in was collecting relevant data that showed a comparison of the way horses responded when we changed them from their conventionally fitted saddles into saddles used in a constructive and functional way as developed by the Balance Organisation in 1993. It's also been called the Balance Saddling System.
One of the stipulations that I had in my research protocol was that the saddle had to be fitted and checked by an approved conventional saddle fitter no more than six months before we did the data gathering. I expected that the constructive saddles would reduce the amount of pressure um, under the saddle and distribute it more evenly, um, but I was shocked by how dramatic the results were for both pressure reduction and for the increase in stride length. The constructive saddling system concept reduces pressure under the saddle of the ridden horse while allowing greater movement through the forelimbs to produce a longer stride. What is not so widely recognised is that saddles that have been fitted in a way that's generally accepted as correct in respect of conventional saddle fitting guidelines are often restricting natural and efficient movement causing the horse a lot of problems that are not even recognised until they are given the opportunity to try an alternative approach such as the balanced saddling system. What balance refers to as functional saddling always involves the use of an adjustable and layered pad system in conjunction with an appropriate width of well-designed saddle. The key element of the pad system is that it always involves more depth of padding under the front of the saddle than at the back, which allows the horse to change from out of its static posture to an engaged organisation. The area under the front of the saddle is able to lift and widen. It's a very simple method and has been used for well over 25 years. I think it'd be really interesting to do a larger study with a larger group of horses um, in addition to a longitudinal study so to see horses how they develop over um, over sort of up to a month to sort of over a year um, a lot of the um, a lot of the studies done previously have included longitudinal elements to them and I think that'd be a really interesting study to do with our project if you'd like more information, you can go to balanceinternational.com um, and get in touch through the Contact Us page or to Horizons Physiotherapy um, and I'd be more than happy to discuss the research with anybody that's interested.